Good morning, Saints. This is Big D Cross. Uh, God bless every one of you. I'm going to open up with prayer. Dear Yeshua, I claim victory over everyone's life. I ask that today would be that day that we all commit in the same spirit, same mind, same accord, that your word would be used accordingly and that many will come and return unto you that we cry mercy. Bless this day, bless the food and the very water we drink, and bless everything you've done for us. We give you praise and glory. Amen, amen. Today I'm talking about forgiveness part two. We talked about, you know, letting go. Uh, we talked about uh, a lot of areas, but forgiveness is a key that <clears throat> breaks you away from the old to the new. You know, if you want to get a new life, if you want to have changes in your life, and if you're wanting things to finally be the way they need to be, that's where forgiveness plays a part. Now, the part two, that's what we talked about in one. If you haven't heard part one, check it out. It'll explain all that. Part two, we're going to talk about forgiveness to you and God. That's right. In other words, we have let God down in a lot of areas. And we have to ask forgiveness from him, from being you being the bride, him being the groom. That's number one. You know, forgive me, Lord, for not talking to you today. Forgive me, Lord, you know, for not loving you. Forgive me, Lord, that I overlooked the importance of my life with you. And I think, you know, a lot of us don't want to come to that term. We don't want to realize you, you've hurt God. You, you know, he, he, he loves you, but you hurt him. And you need to ask him for forgiveness in all the areas that you hurt him. And now I, my list was up there, you know, so I'm not pointing a finger. I got my own plank to work off, but. Let's look at how that works. Uh, in Nehemiah 9.31, it's nevertheless the great mercies thou did not utter, utterly consume them nor forsake them, but thou art a gracious and merciful God. And, you know, when you hear that gracious and merciful, that means he puts no condition on his love. You know, so he'll accept your forgiveness and he'll open his arms the way the man did when his son came back and he had nothing and his brother said, you know, I did everything right and you don't give me that kind of praise. And the father looked over at him and he said, yeah, but I already know you were going to heaven. And I think that's a lot of us today, you know, we, we settle. We settle in our minds for those areas to hide or to not bring up so we don't have to deal with them. But forgiveness cleanses the system. It's like a, a reverse troll effect uh, where you get rid of parasites and stuff like that. And it just, well, it does the same thing, but it's these familiar spirits and, and these, these areas of weakness, it, it strengthens those areas and I, I think a lot of us today need that strength right now because uh we don't know where america's going we just pray we ask god to have his will his way and work it out and according to his mercy not ours let's check that out in hebrews uh, eight twelve. it says for i will be merciful unto their unrighteousness and their sin and their iniquities I will remember no more. See, he's just waiting for you. He's waiting for you to come and look. Say, look, I failed you. I am the bride, you're the groom. And, you know, I'm also supposed to be the son of God. And I haven't conducted myself that way. Um, there's areas in my life that have been misled uh, where I thought I was doing right and I wasn't. Um... So, what you got to do is reason with God. You got to take that unction and say, I need to go reason with him and talk to him. And Isaiah one eighteen, it says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Those 
and thought your sin be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. That's his love. I mean, but he's just waiting for you to say, look, forgive me, I failed. And I know we can ask for forgiveness because things aren't going right in your life or things aren't quite the way you want them, where finance or, or you know, a job or whatever. And then you put that, forgive me, to get that part right. But you're forgetting the second part is getting your marriage between Yeshua and you in order. And I think that plays a key role. You know, when Solomon had that temple and he kept did everything he could to keep it perfected, it stayed perfected. And nobody would walk in there without permission. And it should be the same thing with your relationship with God that you realize... Today is a new day. Yeah, I failed. Yeah, I've messed up. Yeah, I made a lot of bad choices. But I ask for your forgiveness to my husband from the bride. That we can build back, build back those things that we had and not live in darkness not have to stay in that area of my life where I'm constantly being challenged by the darkness. Let's read in Colossians 1, 1, 13, 14, how that works out. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. So you see the power of how forgiveness works. Now let's let's do a recap. It takes you away from the low and puts you on the high of his glory. That's why he calls you the sons of God. That's why he says he shall be the splendor of my glory. That's the very reason. You know, one time I, and I, I, you know, I wasn't proud of this, and I'm really putting it on the table right now for you guys, but I went to a church, and uh, we had to live, oh gosh, we had to live all together. You know, basically, I was told that in the church, for those that haven't heard the story, I'm reverberating it, um, <clears throat> um, that I was never baptized, you know, and I had just gone through a harsh way. And I needed to do what was right. Well, a man came across, said, come to my church, da 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 And it made me write all my sin down and use my sin against me every day to go meet disciples. Now, the part about meeting disciples, I had on point. You know, getting out there, reaching people, talking, loving, that was on point. And living a holy life, that was on point. But the problem is, is they didn't know how to forgive. They only knew how to attack. And this drove me out and to see the reality of realism in the church. When I failed in the church, I failed that this wasn't a church. This was a man-made building with some people in it that were doing things that worked according to the flesh way of doing things because the spirit being led and you can't raise your hands or praise God or worship him or speak in spirit, whatever it is, gifts you have, if you can't do it, then you know you it's not right. And when this went down and I went through all that, I remember that I never really asked him for forgiveness of me failing for him, but I only asked forgiveness of the things I did and wanted to do better. 
you see how that works? We, we, we might miss the boat. It, well, it looks like, hey, I asked for forgiveness for everything I did. Well, how about him? How do you think his feelings feel right now? You know, you're you're the groom. Oh, well, he's the groom and you're the bride. How do you think he feels? Let's read Matthew twelve thirty two. And who else? And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man. It shall be forgiven him, but whoever speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in the world, neither in the world to come. So, there's a condition, and that condition is he gave us the comfort of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, to keep us aligned. Knowing that, look, you step over this, there's nothing I can do. If you fail this part, I love you, but there's only so far I can go to help you. And I was at that point of where I just wanted forgiveness to make everything work again. And a lot of us do that. They're all, oh, well, you know, I want my finances back, so I'll ask for forgiveness, I'll pray, I'll plead, I'll buy, you know, or I want my a job, I need it, I'm out of work, you know, I'll plead, I'll beg, but, but you forgot him and the whole thing. And yes, I'm talking to somebody, you know, we forget our relationship with him daily because we have so much caught up in this world. But the Bible clearly states, be not of the world. Ye are the things in the world, for ye are of the world. Ye have not love for the Father, for the Father, and they're, you know, are two opposite. So there you go. There you have that distinction that when you ask for forgiveness, you also bring to the table those things that we just talked about. And how many of you can actually say you've done it? How many can you say you forgot to do it? It doesn't matter. The point of it is, is that you get this. And that you don't fail in these areas to get your blessings. And, you know, when he left you the comfort of the truth, the Holy Spirit, why not allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and help you with decision making? You have to get to this point. You know, many times Jesus or Yeshua, he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he saw them, you know, a remnant and casting lots. That was in Luke 23, 34, you know. And he still loved them. He still, he still had that genuine love because his love was selfless. But at the same time, you know, he got hurt. Because not only does he watch you while you're sleeping, not only does he pick you up when you fall, but he also loves you when you're not loving him back. And that's why today, Hosea 14, 2, it says, Take with you words and turn to the Lord and say to him, Take all my iniquity and receive us graciously, so we will render the character of our lips. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for it is my blood of the New Testament, which shed for many for remission of sin. That was in Matthew twenty six, twenty seven and eight. And in Hebrews nine twenty two and almost all things are by law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. So this is what it takes today for you to really see the changes, and we overlook them, and we overlook them. You know, we take the eye on sometimes, which idiot, I always say eye talks, idiots out, your damnic nature. Well, I used to be prideful, but I'm humble. No, you can never humble yourself. It's only God that gives us provision. 
And he gives those people gifts. And he wanted you and I to use those gifts. But how can you use them if you're not asking for forgiveness or areas to help you see how to use the gifts correctly? So this all plays in that role. And if you feel like you need to return the Father and ask for forgiveness, I want you to pray this prayer of me today. Dear Yeshua, I failed you. I failed a relationship with you. I did things on my own accord. I tried to get it the way I wanted. I even used Christian wording to establish my groundwork. And I totally was not the bride to the groom. And I ask you for forgiveness right now. That you'll cleanse my spirit, cleanse my heart, cleanse my soul. That I'll never be the same again. Amen. If you prayed that prayer of me, I know that you've got victory. And that you'll see the light shine and your cup of oil will overflow. God bless us. Big D Cross. Till next time. Amen. We love you.